players, welcome to HakeOnSock.com. Today I'm here to talk about a common issue that's plagued Airsoft players since the advent of the High Capacity Magazine, and that issue is magazine obstructions. Some of you have had the misfortune of having to deal with a lot of these, some of you have been pretty lax in the matter, and uh, you're lucky. Anyways, today I'm here to talk about um, ways to remedy that situation, and ways to uh, preemptively uh, counter that whole issue. Um, we'll start with the basics of what you need to do so uh, for the maintenance part and for the preemptive measures. Um, we're going to need the holy grail of airsoft maintenance other than knowledge that is silicone oil. You can get this in most any hardware store. I've been told that uh, food grade silicone oil is better for uh, plastic and rubber but um, this seems to do the job. Uh, you know, this will work in a pinch. This is, you know, you can get it in different brands. There's liquid, there's liquid ranch, there's uh, generic brands, and this one is Blaster brand. Yeah, Blaster. Anyways, um, we'll start with the, one of the most common magazines, um, and that is this, uh, the M4, M16 style Stenag magazines. And um, this is very common. Air, this is very common if you're familiar to the world of airsoft and. Um, there's a few tools you'll need to take apart these magazines. As I mentioned earlier, you may need um, a mallet, hammer, preferably a mallet because they're a little easier to wield and they're less harmful to surfaces, uh, e.g. by scratching them. This one won't. Uh, one of these little, you can get a Phillips head screwdriver. This is one of those little cheapy ones that come with most airsoft guns. Uh, fairly handy, inexpensive, does the job. And here's a precision screwdriver that you can get with multiple heads. Uh, this one has a T9 Torx head on it. Uh, this is for uh, most of the D-Boy JG magazines um, because they come with Torx heads or whatever they feel like. I actually, I actually have uh, some extras here. I actually have a uh, three, uh, three thirty-second uh, uh, inch head, uh, Allen head rather, and there's and I have a uh, T10 Torx here. So just in case we run into any snags in that matter, and then I have a Stanley 1.5 millimeter. Uh, punch. This is ideal for punching out the, um, the retaining pins inside magazines like the AK-47, the M14, um, and the MP5 magazines. Yeah. And I have a long shaft um, flathead screwdriver. This one you can get at most any electronic store, uh, hardware store, hobby store. They're fairly inexpensive. Yeah. Okay. So we'll start with the Stenag mag, as I said earlier. Okay. Um, the easiest way without taking it apart, taking it apart is... Um, to lubricate this magazine properly, because sometimes from the factory there's uh, seam lines inside of the uh, the plastic guts inside the walls of it, more notably the feet uh, the feet shaft right here. Um, yeah, there's uh, you can lubricate that, and if that doesn't help, uh, what you can do is take the cleaning rod that comes with most automatic electric guns, um, take the chisel end of it, the unjamming end of it, and run it in there, and just kind of run it around in there. Hopefully that'll help smooth out the um, the casting errors. Do that for a little bit, get that going, and um, once you've done that for a little while, um, you may not be able to get it out. You may not have ease like that right there. Um, if you have a hard time getting it out, pull on the uh, release tab up here. Just gonna zoom in on that so you can see what, see what I'm looking talking about. Zoom, 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 Mazda. Okay, right there. There's a tab right there. You just pull back on it and just lift that out. Okay, there you go. Okay. Zoom out. Okay. Should the silicone oil and the deburring trick uh, not work, uh, you may have to resort to taking this magazine apart. So, on the bottom, as I said before, uh, most JG D-Boy magazines have a Torx head, a T9 Torx or a T10. So, take your Torx, unscrew the screw, Then you want to take, um, there's two tabs on uh, adjacent sides of the magazine, um, actually rather parallel uh, sides of the magazine. There's two tabs right here, there's one right here, and there's one right there. So what you want to do is you want to take your flathead screwdriver. Sometimes you may need to just push on one uh, to pull the guts out. And sometimes you may need to pull on both, you may need to get two screwdrivers, but for most cases uh, you can just punch out one side. It depends on which one has more tension on it. As you can see, I only took was one on this one, so. Here you have the guts of the magazine. Um, the basic anatomy of this is this is the feed shaft. 
uh, this is the feed, uh, the feed, uh, this is the feed uh, the feed curve right here. There's a sprocket inside of here that has a uh, set of um, pointed ridges on them that kind of just move it through like a like a cement processing plant, you know, like where they got that deal that pushes it uphill. Um, it pushes it up in here and pushes it up into the feed shaft and the lock and the retaining lock right here keeps it from going, allowing it to put tension. But the other part of the tensioning part is uh, inside here is the reservoir where the um, BB sit if it was inside the magazine. As you can see, it's uh, flared right here to where it'll sit, sit in there correctly. And uh, there's a small um, there's a small uh, tensioner weight right here that sits on the outside. Uh, this is crucial to the tensioning uh, method used by these uh, used by these magazines, and um, it's attached to this um, the sprocket right here, which has little studs on it that allows it to um, that assists it with feeding it through the um, the feed well and then the feed curve right here. So, yeah, this has to be there. So, if this comes off, you can replace this uh, with some creative uh, maneuvering. So, if it's not there, or if it's not working, it would uh, it wouldn't do this right here. So, it would uh, spin with the um, the rest of the internals. So, that's pretty much the gist of how the inside of these magazines work. Okay, should you have any problems with um, BBs getting obstruction inside of there? If all else has failed, if you try to dejam it, if you tried uh, pulling on this um, the retaining nib right here, uh, you could. Um, there's a little trick you can use with the Phillips head screwdriver. If there's BBs inside of here, uh, you could release the pressure on the clock spring on the inside right here, and the tensioner weight right here, by um, releasing tension on the feed well section of this. And you can do that by if you notice, there's a series of screws right here. There's about four or five of them. I believe there's five on this one. There's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, a couple, a couple turns left with the screwdriver. You could release the tension on everything, and it'll eventually a whine sounding a little like a duck. It'll make like a Wah! noise. Um, and um, that should help unjam it, and you should be able to freely get this stuff out. If it doesn't come out, then um, you can kind of hit on it as you hold this back right here. And hopefully that should go. That should help it go through. You can kind of just you know, like that if you need to. Or while it's shut, you can try and do that too. While everything's assembled, you can do that too. Make sure everything's out of here, inside of the reservoir. Or you can take the good old mallet to it and just like that. That's what the rubber mallet's for. So, okay. So, should you have, should this all be fixed and done with? Hopefully, um, you shouldn't have any more casting errors. As you see, there's some already some casting errors right here and here. Some small casting errors right here, here. There might be on the inside of this seam right here um, that can cause issues, but that's what the end jamming rod trick is for. Yeah, if it's on the outside of the magazine, there shouldn't be any problems. Okay, so hopefully you have this fixed. Just uh, put that back together, put it back in, uh, put the torque screw back in the bottom of it, and um, hopefully your magazine should work okay while clearing the obstruction. Okay. Magazine's fixed, put it aside. Okay. We'll move on to another magazine with a similar style, and that is um, in terms of takedown. That would be the um, that'd be the uh, G36 magazine. This one actually has a torx. On most cases it may have a Phillips head, but the newer ones have torxes. So you want to take the torx on this one again. Similar takedown method minus the tabs on this model. Uh, the guts are a little bit trickier to get out on this model. You may have to push up on them. As you can see, I'm sticking the screwdriver in the hole right here. I'm pushing up on it, and then you should be able to see this come out just a tiny bit. And be able to pull the guts out of this. Uh, this is same, very same uh, teardown method, uh, very same troubleshooting method, except for this one appears um, to be a little more self-explanatory. As you can see, the, you can see what's going on inside there a little bit better. Let's get you a zoom in on that so you can get an idea of how high cap looks on the inside. Actually, it's a white background. You can see it. There you go. Okay, so now you have a general idea of how these work. See, tensioner weight moves with it. And then hold that down. Okay. 
Okay, and that's pretty much the gist of how to get these things apart. If you you can use the same troubling sh uh, shooting, you use use the same troubleshooting method as before, and um, hopefully that should help alleviate your problem. So back to place, let's pan out, and there you go. Now before I go any further and explain to uh, how to take apart these magazines further. Um, let me stress to you that if you don't feel comfortable taking apart the magazine um, as a whole or to go any further, I don't advise you do so because if you take the magazine apart any further, um, there's a large clock spring inside of here. It's a large coil style spring. It's like similar to those that are inside of wind-up watches and clocks. They're meant to apply a um, horizontal tension and um, if you should get this whole housing apart where there's a retaining ring inside of here that keeps the whole thing together, uh, getting that clock spring in may be a major headache. There's a special way you have to set them and you have to retension them. It proves to be tedious and time consuming, so you know if you don't feel comfortable doing this, then uh, we don't advise you to. The best solution is to take it to somebody who's a little more apt in um, airsoft repair or magazine repair specifically, and uh, that can help alleviate that problem. However, if you want to take it upon yourself, that's why we're doing this video. So, okay. Now that you understand how to take apart the G36 magazine, let's get rid of this guy. Okay. Let's move on to another one with a similar takedown, and that's the um, M14 magazine. This is more specifically a SEMA M14 magazine. Um, I believe it's similar to the M14. I've not handled one in a long time, so I can't really say 110% for sure. More so a 98% sure. Okay, so... Um, you may, there's one extra step to doing this. It has a similar takedown to the Stenag magazine and the G36 magazine, and that is uh, there's a roll pin right here. There's a, not a roll pin, actually, just a retaining pin. Show to you right. It should be right there. Let's point to it. It's right here. Okay. You can take your punch. Take your punch and then put it inside the hole. It doesn't matter what side you do it from. There's no knurling on the pin, so you don't have to worry about it uh, having a grip or a wrong way that comes out. So just run it through. You may need to hold it up if it's a flat surface. I'm using my pinky to hold it up. Okay. Once you have the pin out, pull it out like that, and the pin should be right here. Don't lose the pin. Let's pan out so I can give you a better close-up before I pan out. Screws located on the bottom. This one, as you can see, is a Phillips head. So you can use the Phillips head screwdriver to pull that out. Okay. Don't lose the screw. And then, same case as the other ones, Just pull the guts right out. So you can see it has a similar principle to the other ones. It's got the same winding wheel, same clock spring, uh, same cog, same tensioner weight. And um, even got a locking ring similar to the other one. Uh, the same method applies to this one. Uh, this one actually has six screws as opposed to a um, the other ones, which only had five. Uh, using that trick before, and uh, yeah, loosen them up. Two uh, two turns. Hopefully, should do the job. Uh, release the BBs with the tensioner weight. Empty out the magazine, etc., etc. You guys pretty much got the idea by now, so I'm not gonna bore you with all the minute details over and over again. I want to be redundant, so I already am. <laughs> I'll shut up. Okay. Put the magazine back together. Pin back in. Hammer time. There you go. Put the screw back in. There you go. Put that bad boy aside. Okay.